Welcome to chapter 5, part 5 of the full masterclass on the Sicilian dragon. We've covered a lot of the theory already, and now we are moving on to the Levin fish system, which occurs after g6 and now the move f4. Now, I need to include this as a separate chapter because although it's not that common, it's a really scary looking move, and if you're not prepared, this can end badly. Now, as always, with these theory-based chapters, I will leave a PGN in the description below so you can copy that into Chessable, Chess-based, Lee Chess, and study the theory on your own. Now, I do need to emphasize here the importance of the move order, because with the move f4, they're clearly going for e5, which is why bishop g7, although playable, is not my recommendation, because after e5, white is getting exactly what they want. Uh, here we, I mean, just to show you, after d takes, uh, now f takes, and now knight uh, f to d7, they can already strike with e6, and their idea is, of course, to ruin the pawn structure. If we take, then after takes, I mean, everything hangs. So although you can try to get away with bishop g7, it's just unnecessary risks uh, and I prefer to play the move knight c6. Switching up the move order, this is the only variation, for the most part, that we don't play bishop g7 against and start by playing knight to c6. Now, the obvious question is, of course, well, what if they take and then play e5 here? Well, now that the knight is gone, e5 is a lot less powerful. Here we can move the knight back to d7, and it's just, yeah, not as strong as it was before. They can either push or take. Pushing is just... Uh, no longer strong at all, we can simply take, and they have no attack. Of course, the knight is no longer able to take, and there's nothing they can do here. Our, our bishop will develop, we castle, put pressure on this pawn, develop our pieces. We have a huge pawn mass in the center, and we're up material. This is a dream position. The critical move is if they take here. Now we continue by taking, and after queen to d4, you have to make a choice here. You have two options. You can move your knight or your queen to f6 here. In both cases, you're defending uh, the pawn again, which is useful. Um, but of course, you're also guarding from this main attack on h8. And so I personally like the move knight f6 here because it keeps more pieces on the board. And I actually claim that this queen is uh, something that we can take advantage of later advancing our pawns and using the queen for tempo. But it's totally legit. Um, and possible to go queen f6 here, after which we reach this endgame where we can continue something by just something like bishop e2, uh, bishop e7, just developing. Our bishop also can come to e6. Here we, we can even consider going king to d7 if we don't want to uh, castle. Notice the bishop went to e7 though instead of g7 because this pawn is in some cases a weakness, but otherwise it's a very big strength. We can mobilize these pawns and start to put some pressure on this. Uh, on these open files and this nice pawn control in the center. So you can play that, but I actually like knight f6 a little more, and the idea is to again develop the bishop to e7 here, keeping an eye on d6, and after they castle, we castle, we eventually push, and we push again, and we push again, and we just get really nice play here. Um, obviously, there's the pin now on the queen, so we move the queen, after which... I mean, there's some clear targets in this position. Although the bishop, uh, admittedly, is misplaced here, there's no idea. There's no reason why we can not later put the bishop on f6, or in some cases, put the rook here, attack these bishops, and then even maneuver the bishop back to g7, where it will be an absolute uh, powerhouse on this diagonal. Of course, the open file is also something helpful here, and the bishop's easy development to this diagonal. So lines where they take uh, first with knight takes c6 typically don't end well for them. We just get really good development, and the broken pawn structure is nothing to be scared about. So really, this leaves one other option for them, which is just to develop normally, in which case it's a little silly that they played f4. If they're not going to go for this aggressive move, why play f4? Maybe it's just a weakness, and as a matter of fact, it is. Here we can continue... Uh, by just developing our bishop, and the later e5 typically won't work for them, something like knight takes, knight takes, and now e5, we simply go uh, with knight to g4, and their bishop is attacked, 
the pawn on e5 is not particularly safe. This is very good for us. And if they don't do this, let's say they continue developing, again, my question is, why did they develop, uh, why did they waste time putting this pawn here, especially because now it gives us really good control in the future over g4 because they can never go f3. So here we castle, they castle, we develop our queen, and this is really beautiful. Another huge benefit is this weakness on this diagonal. Uh, so the queen coming here, targeting this pawn, and also putting pressure here um, is something to be aware of uh, because they can never move their knight and expose an attack on the queen because this comes with check, then this is hanging, this is hanging, everything's falling apart for them, and it's all because of this weakening move f4. So if they're going to play f4 and then not get e5, that's a huge accomplishment for us because they've just unnecessarily weakened their position. And if they insist on getting e5 um, by taking and then going e5, as I've showed, uh, we can uh, taking is actually fine as well. But knight e7 is my recommendation because we don't want to trade queens that early on in the game. And this is totally fine. None of these moves work. So the Levin fish system, although it has its own name, although it looks admittedly really scary with these pawns coming down, it's nothing to fear, and I doubt you're going to see it in many of your games, but if you do, this is how you disarm it. Critically, not playing bishop g7, but going for knight to c6 instead. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the continuation of this masterclass. Subscribe if you're new around here, like this video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Peace out.